Hello everyone. So I wanted to show this off to you. Uh, this is my uh, 1 3 50th scale USS Grissom from round two. Um, this is one of the many models that I built this summer. This is one of the ones that I really wanted to um, get to. I, I desperately wanted to build it. I had it in a box for, I don't know, for months and months and months and um, I, I just, I was so wanting to build it, but then I finally did. Um, one of the things that, uh, that that time allowed was for me to plan. And, uh, and so that can be very helpful. So, um, this is a very basic uh, build um, it, as far as paint. Um, I just did a flat coat over the there we go over the bare plastic and um, and it worked just fine. Um, this this plastic is like whiter than white, so um, it worked out well. All right, so let's start with the top. Okay, so um, I noticed in screen grabs that the windows looked a little blue, and I didn't want to just paint them white because you paint them white against a white ship, and they're just going to get lost. So I did a very um, sorry. <laughs> a very uh, light coating of uh, to me a clear blue to achieve that effect um, and the top here the top the the bridge dome area was uh, painted with to me as bare metal silver and uh, this area was a uh, to me a paint I think was it German gray or something I can't really remember honestly um, I'm sorry to say, but this, um, this area was painted gray, and interestingly, those are uh, wheels from a 135th <laughs> uh, scale on the actual filming model. So I think it's like a 135th scale um, German vehicle of some type. But um, and these panels here in the back on the top and on the side were uh, painted in haze gray, although they don't really look like haze gray. I don't know if they changed their their formulation or what, because haze gray used to look more blue, um, and this looks a little more gray. Um, and I did mask off all of this stuff. Uh, I didn't want to do a lot of, actually I didn't want to do any um, hand painting. And it's hard to see here, but I do actually have some uh, weathering up here, which does kind of match the studio model. And we come to the front section here. This is all a decal up top. And I did have a little trouble uh, in certain areas. If you can see here, you'll notice that there are some chips out of the decal. One thing I was really worried about with this model was the decals that go that wrap around here. But surprisingly, they actually turned out rather well. Um, I'm, I'm quite happy with with that. And they're also on the back of the, the cell pylons as well. Um, they're supposed to be some up here, but one of them got damaged. Um, it just kind of broke apart, and so I didn't want to have it on just one side, uh, so I left it off of both sides. Um, here's the back, back of the primary hull, and um, notice the details here. Uh, I actually put these in upside down by accident. Um, they should be flipped. 
so yeah oh well now this is one thing that I this is one of the things that I was able to plan for now in screen grabs uh, from the movie you'll notice that uh, on the impulse engine here there's a hot spot right in the middle and that's obviously where they had the uh, LED or whatever you know the neon whatever they used to light it it was right there in the center and um, the outer edges were kind of dark well I achieved that on this model by putting a piece of styrene behind the center section just plain old white styrene and then I left the rest of it open didn't put any styrene behind that and so it in certain lighting um, most lighting it it does create that effect of being lit in the center also these uh, these holes in the back uh, for some reason round two just left them open not sure why but um, I put a piece of styrene behind that before I painted it and uh, it just wound up getting painted gray I did mask around uh, this lip edge here because I noticed that the paint um, from that section extended down here onto the the plastic um, from both the top and bottom so I did mask that off and and um, that's one of those little details that when you're doing it you know it's kind of got a butt pucker factor of 10 but um, you know once you do it and you get it painted and it looks okay um, you were really glad that you did it. And, uh, got your standard Starfleet Federation decals here. Um, the decals on this are actually quite minimal. You know, it's just the registry, the name, two white stripes on either side, the, these stripes, uh, you know, the pennants, and these stripes on the secondary hull. Uh, the registry and the stripe on the bottom and uh, beyond that there are you don't use any of the other decals and that's something that um, some modelers some other modelers have gotten confused about completely understandable um, the decal uh, the decal guide in uh, the instructions is not very clear uh, on that so you know no worries um, if you made that mistake don't beat yourself up about it too much. Um, this is also bare metal silver down here. This this dome under the saucer. Um, you'll notice these uh, greeblies on the inside of the nacelle pylons. Um, I masked those off and painted those the same gray as on the rest of the model. Um, now we'll get to the top of the secondary home. So you'll notice it's just silver. It doesn't have any panel lines on it. Uh, from the reference that I had of the Grissom model, I don't think the Grissom had those uh, panels on these top on this top uh, domed section here. So I omitted those. I did use um, I did paint the center section uh, with insignia white, which kind of gives it a slightly off-white look to it. And now we come to kind of the, the star of this, the, uh, the bottom of the secondary hull here. So you'll notice that there's a, a kind of faint paneling effect on here. And um, it, it's really a nice effect. And again, this is where the planning came in. You know, I had enough time to look at it think about it and think about how I wanted to do it. And what I did is I took a piece of um, 3x5 index card and I cut some shapes into it. Just some basic rough, you know, uh, outline shapes. And, um, and I had painted this lower section in um, bare metal silver and then uh, I would tape the index card to one section and 
I painted all of this separate from the secondary hull. Um, but you have to install this piece in the secondary hull before, you know, as you're building it. You can't put it in later. And so uh, that necessitated masking it off uh, once I went and did the overall dull coat. Because again, this is just the kit plastic with a dull coat over it. Um, so what I did was I put the, the index card, put it in one spot, and then used uh, to me a flat clear. And instead of having different grays, it's just dull coated in certain areas. And you can see kind of the effect there. And um, and I, I had the same shapes in the index card, and I would just turn the orientation, depending upon where it was, trying, you know, um, making sure not to repeat uh, an orientation so that the paneling looked almost random. Kind of got a bit of a dark spot here on my lighting, but um, testing out some new lighting here, so forgive me if, if it's not working out. It's hard for me to see on my... Um, viewfinder. But yeah, I really love that effect and for me it kind of it's one of the many things on this on this model that makes the model. Um, it kind of sells it for me. You know, just looking at it uh, in my own space being displayed it's like, yeah, that's one of the things that sticks out and I go, hey, that looks really cool. You know, actually it does look really cool in that lighting, but it's like, oh yeah, that looks really cool. It just looks just like the studio model. So, uh, three by five index card, you can get them at the dollar store, and you get like, you know, fifty of them or a hundred or something, and for a buck twenty-five, and um, you can use them for that. They're very, they're very handy. So the next section that I'm rather proud of uh, on this model, and the the effect is so subtle that it's hard to tell. But if you'll notice. On this kind of ribbed section here, it's kind of moraying here, but um, that's to be expected. It actually goes from dark to light. And the way in which I achieved that is I had two different color grays. I had, uh, I believe it was German gray or something like that. I'm so sorry. I, I did this months ago and I completely forgot what colors I used. Um, but I had a, a lighter gray and a darker gray. I painted on the light gray first, and then using spray paints in a spray can, um, I did kind of a, a fade effect on the uh, uh, over the uh, light gray, and that kind of gives that effect of being, you know, kind of faded. And if you look at the actual filming model, um, their fade effect isn't nearly as clean. Um, but unfortunately you, you'll find, you know, kind of dark spots like this here, but, you know, I mean, overall, uh, you can't, it's hard to see it there, but overall, I'm really happy with it. Um, you know, in person, it's, it's a little more subtle, you know, because I, I never have this much light on it. Um, but yeah. So that's how I achieved that, and um, yeah. Now, one area where I let myself down on this is back here. Now, I painted this with the same gray that I used on everything else, but the lip edge around here is not supposed to be gray. It's supposed to be hull color. Um, but I got lazy, and uh, I didn't mask around there, and I should have. But you know, it's one of those things. We have the navigation lights here. I love that. There's something about uh, clear or translucent green lights that I just love. I don't know why, but um, I do. Now this rather large decal here on the secondary hull, in the instructions they tell you to cut it right here. And so I did that. And uh, it worked out fine. So definitely do that if you're going to build this. One area where I did deviate from the um, reference and from the 
the filming model I was as it was built in 83 or 84 or whatever um, was down here with this stripe. I decided to use the one with the the red stripe with the um, white uh, outline. I just liked how it looked more than um, than without the outline. So I used it. And, uh, you, I mean, you don't really see that. You won't see that detail in the movie, and so I figured I could get away with using it on this. Um, yeah, I guess that's basically it. Yeah, so this is a great model. Um, so it's been, lo it's been out long enough to where you can go on eBay, and I hate eBay, but you can really find some deals there if you try. Um, and if you wait long enough. Right now, you can get one of these for under fifty dollars with free shipping. Um, so you know, even if you're not a fan of this ship, this is a really cool model to have. Um, you may say, "Well, I only build TOS, or I only build, you know, um, TNG, or or whatever." You know, this is such a a fun and wild design. If nothing else, you can buy this for 50 bucks, and you can use it as a paint project, and you can study, you know, you can, you can um, build your technique, because it's fairly cheap, and it's small, it's not a huge model, I mean, you see my hand here, I don't have huge hands, um, it's 13 inches long, maybe 13.5, and uh, it builds up to a really nice little piece you know if you have a um, if you have a desk at work you know and and you say you're not into building or you're not into you know this ship necessarily but you want to build something and maybe you want something for your desk maybe this would be small enough for you to put it there and uh, you know your co-workers would, would either steal it or they'd go yeah oh, hey wow that looks really cool what is that you know and um, but yeah, it's, it's just a great little model and I'm, and it's, it's accurate. You know, the one one thousandth scale version, as I think I said in my review of this kit that I did, uh, a while ago, um, the shape of the secondary hull on the one one thousand kit is wrong. This, this shape, right, uh, the silver section up here, it's the wrong shape on, on the smaller kit, but on this one it's perfect absolutely perfect and so um, you know if you feel intimidated by the size or whatever you know still just pick it up I mean it's just 50 bucks you know um, pick it up and and it's just it's a great kit even for those who are not necessarily a fan of this ship it builds up really really nice and it's a really nice display piece and I, I just I can't recommend it enough. Um, I actually have a second one that I bought. Um, it had a, a damaged box and um, I got it cheaper than, you know, the 48 bucks. It, not much cheaper, but, you know, it was like $30 or something. And uh, I have plans on kit bashing that. So, um, you know, someday I'll, I'll get around to that. It's going to require a lot of cutting, so I'm kind of like I don't want to deal with that right now. Um, but, uh, yeah, just a great little kit. I'm, I was one of the people who asked uh, Round 2 repeatedly if they would make uh, one of these. I suggested one 537 scale uh, in scale with the uh, Reliant and the Enterprise. But thankfully, um, Round 2 did the calculations and, you know, uh, basically, basically got it at the right size for one three fifty at scale, and I'm glad they did because it it um, it's nice, and they did it justice. So definitely um, pick it up uh, if you can, and uh, I highly recommend it. And uh, yeah, I've enjoyed showing this to you guys, and uh, thank you for watching. I appreciate it, and um, have a good one. Bye bye.